Hello, I am Larry Kyle Walker Jr. Larry Walker was my father. Of all the things I remember about my father, probably what sticks out the most is just how incredibly involved he was in the community. Here in the community of Winter Park, he was the mayor of the Olympic Village back when the Olympics were in Atlanta and the Women's Soccer League games were held here in Central Florida. He was also highly involved with the Junior Achievement Society of Central Florida. But where most of his community activities stick out to me is from growing up in my hometown of Dover, Massachusetts. He literally knew everyone in that town. There was not a single house we had not been invited to for dinner at some point. And very few families that hadn't been cut over to our house for dinner as well. He was involved in every community activity in Dover, including, not always to my advantage, the Boy Scouts. My father was the troop leader of Troop 52, and he made the scouting experience different. I didn't really get to find out just how different until I went to the annual campery. Not the jamboree, the campery. That's the one where all the Boy Scout troops in Massachusetts get together. Now, at the campery, all of us, a bunch of scouts from various parts of Massachusetts, were in the mess hall. And the mess hall was the one place where we had to keep the conversation focused on scouting activities because all the other scoutmasters were standing around watching and listening to us. So we started talking about what we had done to get this merit badge or to get that pin. And the one thing we started all focusing and talking about was the travel merit badge because we noticed that was the one merit badge everyone at the table seemed to have in common. So all the stories started coming, you know, one by one. They would talk about, oh, how we took a train to the other end of the state and stayed at this old broken down motel that we helped fix up for them a little bit, you know, community service. So they let us stay there for free. Another one talked about how they had gone hiking up into the mountains and across a, across a state line and had picked up trash all along the way. And they talked about how they had brought their own rations, made their own food, had campouts and food. And, and s'mores and everything. Well, then of course it got to me. And after hearing all this, I basically had to sit there and say, well, to get my travel merit badge, uh, my scout troop and I uh, spent the night in the presidential suite at the Sheridan Hotel in downtown Boston. And we, um, to get our food, we had room service. Yes, and it was, uh, it, it was, it was, it was exciting. And there was a very pregnant pause at the table and thankfully the the master of ceremonies started speaking right after that but yes dad did things differently he would bring his personal touch and flair to anything he did and looking back on it he invariably made it better hey there everyone this is kai uh larry's son dad um i'm sure everyone's been sharing stories of larry's influence uh, the way dad always lifted others around him and um gave everybody the best opportunities possible and i i could touch on that i could do a, a thousand different stories about that but i figured i'd very briefly share a, a, a memory that kind of what it was like growing up with with dad um it wasn't until i was a father of my own and had daughters and they were watching a tv show on disney one day the sweet life of zach and cody and it was about a couple kids that grew up living in hotels and it was so, such a unique situation that they made a tv show out of it and i i got a kick out of that because i had to sit the girls down and tell them that when i was born lived the sheraton princess kailani and in the sheraton center in toronto and the saint regis in new york and uh Columbus, Ohio, and then mom didn't want to raise her kids moving around all the time, so dad took a job with a different resort company, and for almost a year I lived at the Playboy Club in New Jersey. I just thought it was Halloween year-round, and all the girls were rabbits, but 
that's the the upbringing that dad brought up for Larry and I uh, we didn't know it was unusual we just thought everybody had room service and housekeeping and lots of rabbits in the yard dressed as people it's uh, an entertaining story people always get a kick out of that one and uh, I love you dad I love the influence you have been and the lessons I've learned and passed on to my daughters and I miss you. Thank you very much. I love you, Dad. Hi, Jan. David Gonzalez here. I was a friend of uh, Larry Walker. I met him in high school. We hung out together. We did everything together. We hit hiking all over to different beaches. So we uh, ran across country together. I remember in the, the biggest thing that I always will remember that was the final state meet near UCLA. And uh, the ground was rough and hilly and uh, I always beat Larry. He came up beside me and put his hand on my shoulders and I lost contact with him. That guy came in seventh. I always beat him, but not that year. He came in great. I came in 27th. He was fantastic. He was a fantastic guy all over. He also had a red pickup truck and it was a wreck, but we, he took us everywhere with it and uh, we had to push it to get it started. Well. I better cut it because it won't record anymore. But I love you, Larry. I miss you. Please remember me. I'll remember you always. Bye. Ringo and I met met Larry, Midge, and the boys, Larry Jr. and Kai, over 50 years ago, when Larry was transferred to Hawaii as manager of the Princess Kailani Hotel. I was general manager of the Royal Hawaiian Hotel at the time. Larry and the family were transferred from Hawaii several years later to New York City. He moved on from New York and uh, ended up at Sheridan headquarters in Boston uh, with the family uh, a few years later. We also moved to Boston to uh, Sheridan headquarters. We moved to the town of Dover and lived very close to where Midge, Larry, and the boys lived in, in Dover. Larry and I drove in to Boston together almost every weekday for the next five years. We were very active in many activities in Dover, including playing together on the Dover tennis team. In fact, Larry and I were fortunate to win a district tournament while we were playing on the team. 1988, we were so happy to receive in the mail an invitation to Larry's wedding. He was marrying a lovely girl and in Florida. <clears throat> and we were so happy for him that we decided we would go to, from Hawaii to Florida and we were so pleased at the girl he chose, Jan. She was the perfect mate for Larry. While distances kept us apart for some years, Mary Lou and I were delighted last year to be able to travel to Orlando in Winter Park to see the walkers. He lit up a room wherever he was. He was the favorite of so many people, including us. And we just uh, give our condolences to the family and tell them how much uh, we love them all and how much we miss Larry. Yes. Aloha. Yes, our love to you, Jan and the boys. Hi, Jan and anybody else who may be listening. It's been really difficult to start this uh, video. Uh, all of all the people who knew and loved Larry Walker were affected uh, by him for so long that I think we're all still in uh, disbelief that he's not with us anymore. And I thought about recapping uh, all the fun stuff that Larry and I had uh, with so many other people. Uh, my entrance into the Larry Walker University started in uh, 1975 
and it never stopped after that. It started with Playboy, as a matter of fact, uh, before Sheraton, and, uh, and never stopped. He taught lessons in technical stuff, he taught lessons in business, but the lessons that really stuck with me the longest uh, until today and forever are those human lessons, those life lessons, those how to be the best human possible. And those lessons were many. And they will live on for me and many that I have the privilege to touch uh, forever. And I'd like to give you just one example of how that would and is living on forever. Um, I have the privilege of conducting regular guest speaking classes at several universities, uh, including uh, and mostly Oklahoma State University where I graduated and that uh, Larry Walker liked to make fun of, and it's not hard to make fun of, and also in my company as well. And one of the classes I conduct, I do the most uh, every year, and then it's uh, just finished one a couple of weeks ago uh, for the business school, not just the hotel school, and it's called Lessons Learned. And what I do is I put up titles of nine situations where I screwed up, made a mistake, but learned something that carried with me uh, forever to this day. And, uh, and out of those nine, six of them were Larry Walker lessons. And it resonates well with, uh, uh, with students. It resonates well with people in business today, uh, the young guns of our company uh, as it is today. And I'm proud to say it also resonates with my children. So in other words, um, Larry K. Walker will be around forever, forever. Because hopefully those lessons will get also taught to others and handed down and we are all better off um, because of Larry Walker. We love you, Jan. Hi, Jan. It's Marguerite and I was a nanny for Kai and Larry Jr. 1980-1981. The most fond memory I have from Larry is when he offered to arrange for my entire wedding for me and Jurgen, which was in Dover, Massachusetts in 1981. The class act Larry was, as he arranged the entire wedding, he, I believe, invited the entire town of Dover, Massachusetts. He drove me to the church in a brand new car, and he arranged for police motorcades. He walked me to the altar and made that wedding day my most beautiful celebration and beautiful memory of our lives. Larry touched so many lives through his kindness, his generosity, which we personally experienced each time we met. Larry, you will be missed. Jan, thank you so much for inviting us to join you in the celebration of Larry's life. Thank you. Hi there, we are Jody and Dick Hartley and my, uh, my daughter Pam, friends of Larry's for years and years, and we're just terribly sorry about his passing. He was a, a great friend and a wonderful tennis player, and we hung out with him for, for every chance we could. Any of us who knew Larry have a lot of stories to tell, and I can remember one especially. My father died weeks before Jan and Larry's wedding. My boss invited me to bring my mother to visit them in Florida, and it worked that going, bringing her with us to the wedding and then going to Vero Beach from there was a good fit. So Jen and Larry very kindly included her in their festivities and we went off to the wedding. The rehearsal dinner was lovely and my mother attended. The afternoon of the wedding, Larry came up to the room where we were and he walked and said, I'd like to speak to my mother. And we went in and sat on her bed and she wasn't sick, but we were in the hotel room. 
and he said, Jay, I want you to come to the wedding celebration. And she said, I couldn't possibly, after Thaxter just died, I couldn't possibly go to a party. And he said, well, I want you to come. She said, well, I just can't. And he said, well, if you don't go, I'm not going. So we had a five minute standoff where they looked at each other and Larry just sat with his hands folded on the bed and said, I'm not going unless you go. So she had no choice but to put on her pretty dress and go to the most fabulous wedding reception we ever could possibly have attended. <laughs> At the front door was champagne and 400 people just came beautifully costumed into the ballroom at the Sheraton and we had a roaring 20s party with a Fax Waller type pianist on a rotating bar, a rotating piano and the music was fantastic, the costumes were wonderful and people had their stockings rolled down and their flapper dresses and the bonnets with a feather and my mother smiled all night long. She said, oh, how my husband would have loved this. It was a wonderful time and it was typical of Larry that he insisted that she go and begin to realize that there was a lot of life left. And I knew Larry through my parents very well. He taught me many things, one of which is to find a mate with humor and his sparkling chuckle and his voice will never leave me. I really know that Larry taught me, as he did to, for me many times, to just pick up the phone when you're thinking about someone. And so I'd get random calls from him and he'd get random calls from me. So he gave us a lot and we will be, he'll be missed dearly. We will always love you all. Hi, this is Trish Kennedy. I met Larry and the boys shortly after Midge passed and we became fast friends. I was Kai's soccer coach. Larry and I played tennis together. We became very, very close friends. Spent a lot, a lot of time together with Larry and the boys. Helped them get settled into their first home down in Winter Park, Florida. And we have maintained a long distance friendship for all these years. Was delighted when he called me to tell me that he had gotten engaged and was very, very happy. Um, came into Larry's life, Jan, at the right time, the right place, and you've had a wonderful 32-year marriage, and I know how happy and loved he was. Um, I, this is a painful time. Um, he's touched so many lives. Um, uh, there's just nothing I can say that's gonna make any difference in terms of the impact he's had on my life all these years later. Um, and the boys, I just wish you lots of healing love during a very difficult time. Um, take care, Larry. God rest your soul. Rest in peace, big guy. Until we meet again. May the wind be at your back. Love you. My name is Tom Werner. I'm the past president of Florida Hospital and Adventist Health System. It was in that setting that I got to know Larry. He served on the foundation board and in so many ways was helpful to us. His generosity was remarkable. When my son got married right out of college and didn't have two nickels to rub together, Larry gifted him and his wife with a night in the honeymoon suite at the Sheraton North. Just an example of the great things Larry has done. It was a privilege for me to know Larry Walker and to be his friend. He was so helpful to so many of us. And at Florida Hospital, he helped us get connected with the community in special ways, and particularly with Disney. He was kind, generous, friendly, always had a smile on his face. I'm going to miss that smile, but I look forward to seeing it again in the Earth Made New. L.W. was the general manager of the Sheraton Orlando North and president of Cypress Hotel Management Company. And I was his executive assistant for a number of those years. He coined the phrase friendliest hotel in the world. We never had a customer complaint, only an opportunity to do things better. And we never pointed a guest into the direction of where, whatever it was they were looking for. It was far better to escort them 
and give them the personal touch, making it the friendliest hotel in the world. LW was a stickler for attendance. He never missed a day. It was a time I thought he might. He called me and apologized for the fact that I might have to run the office myself that day. But before a couple of hours passed, I looked and saw the door opening. And there he was, bigger than life, with a smile on his face that he didn't miss a day after all. He loved being at work. There was a time I had to call in real early one morning because I had a problem with one of my ferrets. I was on the way to the emergency vet clinic. So I called up Human Resources, leaving a message for Donna Duvall, if she could please tell LW that I'd be in later during the day because one of my ferrets had passed away. But the message, maybe through the thunderstorm, that got to LW was that one of my parents had passed. And he said to Donna, give her a call and tell her to take the whole day. But when I told Donna later that it wasn't a parent, it was a ferret. And she had to relay that back to LW. And he said, do you mean to tell me I gave the day off for a ferret? He said, we don't need that getting around. <laughs> he always built up his staff and his employees by let them know that there wasn't anything they couldn't accomplish if they put their mind to it. LW showed confidence in me like he did other people. He came in from the lobby one time and asked me, is that Norm singing out in the lobby? Because we had the bellman that could sing, and he loved singing as he did Broadway show tunes as he was walking through the lobby with his bell cart. And I'd say, yes, sure is Norm. Who else could it possibly be? But... There was just an environment there where you felt like you could do anything. And I'm not saying that's why Norm made it big on Broadway. But I think people that went there to aspire to their dreams after they left the Sheraton, I think it was just an environment to create that sort of a thing. So a lot of us will never forget LW and the lessons that he taught. He really lives on in the hearts of all of us. Hi, my name is Sandy Sugar. I'm president of Valencia College, where I've served for a little over 20 years. And almost the very first person I met when I came to interview for the job at Valencia in uh, 1999 was Larry Walker. They had convened a, a large group of people from the community to meet the candidates for the job and put us in different corners of the ballroom at Church Street Station. And uh, up walked to me a um, handsome fella athletic looking, handed me his card and leaned in and gave me words of encouragement and offered to take good care of us if I and my family came to Orlando. And of course he did. Larry's been a great friend forever. He's a man of faith and passion. Um, he cares deeply about other people. Larry uh, loved with all his heart. He never was half-hearted about loving anyone. And we'll miss him terribly. Hi, my name is Carol Monroe. My husband Norman and I were neighbors of Jan and Larry's um, via Contessa in Winter Park for several years. And one of my fondest memories of being together with Larry was on Friday evenings, we would all gather with our neighbors on our street, have a few cocktails, tell a few stories, and then we'd all go out to dinner. It was a weekly tradition and it was so much fun. I worked for Florida Citrus Sports here in Orlando that covers the college bowl games that most of you might be familiar with. But um, one of the events that we helped host was World Cup soccer first and second rounds. When we found out how involved Florida Citrus Sports would be, my former boss, Chuck Rowe, said we needed to find a chairman. And it just so happens that he, we found a great chairman in Larry Walker. Chuck called him in one day. Larry didn't know what to expect, but he asked Larry if he would be the chairman of hosting the World Cup Games. Larry didn't hesitate, and I can tell you he took such good care of all of the vol thousands of volunteers. He helped with the hotels for all the different teams, 
transportation, practice sites, hospitality, uh, menu planning, all the different foods that we had to have for the different countries. And um, he worked very closely with all the hotels in our area. And I can tell you that the Orlando venue was a great success. In fact, it was voted by the Soccer Association as one of the best venues in World Cup that year. Also, Larry was on the board of directors for Florida Citrus Sports, where he often hosted um, head football coaches, athletic directors, in an event we called Tournaments for Champions. Uh, Larry would take coaches or athletic directors out to dinner. We had golf and fishing tournaments, tennis. Larry was a tennis player. And um, we'd spend the weekend entertaining um, coaches from across the country. And Larry and Jan did a great job with that. Also, he served as our chairman of our hotel committee. The hotel was one of the most important aspects in hosting the bowl games. Uh, Larry helped find the best hotels possible. We worked the rates to incredibly good rates. And this is one of the reasons why uh, Florida Citrus Sports uh, today is still known as the best bowl trip in America is because of our hotels. Larry's incredible relationship with the hotel industry, and he also was chairman of the time of the Central Florida Hotel Motel Association, helped build uh, our integrity as putting on the best show for all of our teams, the VIPs, the bands, and the fans. When Norm and I um, found out that Larry was ill one day, uh, we went over to their home and visited, and I brought some fudgy brownies. Well, we all know that Larry loves chocolate, and uh, we had a really nice visit. I mean, his spirits were high. You could tell he was weak and tired, but uh, he, he, he was, you know, having a good time, and I think he enjoyed seeing us. A few days later, I received a phone call from Larry, and he said, Carol, I just want to thank you for bringing those delicious brownies. I want you to know I've hidden the rest of them in my safe so no one else will eat them. Well, I got tickled, and we started laughing, and I said, oh, Larry, you don't have to hide them. I'll be bringing you plenty of brownies. But I just wanted you to know that my thoughts of Larry are he was a kind, generous, uh, optimistic gentleman, and he had this great big smile, and through his prose, uh, he made you feel very special. And he just loved so many people, and uh, it showed every day. And I can tell you that we will miss him, but our deepest condolences to you, Jan, Larry Jr., Kai, and all of your precious grandchildren. We'll be thinking of you and keep you in our prayers. God bless you all. Hi, I'm Mike Schweitzer. We first met um, Jan and Larry through some friends, and my um, immediate memories uh, were with his, him being a hotelier after he had left a very successful career with uh, Sheridan, for the Sheridan Maitland. And I remember one particular um, time when he had bought, somehow found this Irish pub that was being torn down, and he captured the bar from it and had it torn apart and everything shipped over to Orlando and, and rebuilt it in the hotel. And I was over there for lunch one day, and he saw me, and he says, come on back, I want to show you this pub, and walked in. You could tell it was an old Irish pub and quite charming. And he said, listen, we just got the menu done. I want you to sample the food. And so he, we, he pulled out the lamb stew and, and black pudding, which wasn't bad, pig's feet, which is an acquired taste, I guess, and um, 
potatoes with cabbage and so on. So I got a, a full flavor of the food and then, and then the Guinness. So I like the Guinness and we had quite a few of those. Larry was a terrific guy, a good friend, and I was really impressed when he started Winter Park Angels because based on his success, he was able to bring success to others. And he invited me to a number of those uh, meetings he had with various entrepreneurs where I could add some input. I had some knowledge on the subject. And I really appreciated that and appreciated what Larry did for others. He had a big heart. And um, so that, those are my memories of Larry. Uh, he'll be a great hotelier. He's, he's going to do great in heaven. Hi, my name is Dave Wilson. Uh, Larry and I go back 40 plus years when Sheraton first sent him to Florida to open up some new hotels. Uh, my partner Fred Fraley and I had an advertising agency and we ended up doing quite a bit of work for some of the hotel properties that Larry had connections with. Uh, Larry and I also served on several boards, uh, one of which was the Florida Citrus Sports Association board and we never missed one of those great Citrus Bowl parties that Larry was putting on at the Sheraton all the time and it was fabulous. Larry and I also spent a lot of time on the tennis courts, mostly at the Winter Park Racquet Club, sometimes as adversaries and sometimes as partners. And one of my favorite stories uh, involving Larry and tennis was when uh, Larry and the then uh, professional, uh, head professional at Winter Park Racquet Club, Nate Smith, challenged myself and a friend of mine named Carlos Goffey, who just happened to be John McEnroe's coach when John was a young guy just getting into the business. Needless to say, we squeaked out a victory, but it was it was a really fun time. Um, Larry is one of the great ones, and he will be sorely missed. Hi, I'm Joni Sherm, and I am honored to be able to say that Larry was my friend, and he was a friend at a very special time in Orlando's history when we were going for World Cup, and Larry was really one of the very first hoteliers to speak up in support of what the event could be for Orlando. It meant a lot to us in the effort and he was an integral part of it. Uh, I consider him a friend and I consider him a great advocate for good things in Orlando. He was always working hard and he was a wonderful family man who loved his family and we will miss him. My name is Joe Alvarez and I am friends with Larry Walker I am a dear friend with Larry Walker. I spent uh, close to 20 years hanging out with Larry. We enjoyed uh, many things together. I'll, uh, I'll give you a, a, a sample of some of the things that we were involved in. Uh, we, we enjoyed eating lunch together daily as we had ventured into a, uh, a plant-based diet together for many, many years. Uh, we enjoyed uh, working out together at the, at the Y. Uh, we uh, enjoyed uh, the spinning classes at the Y. I can't tell you how many uh, miles and miles we we logged in uh, doing spinning classes. Uh, we uh, we also had a, a uh, we had our faith in common. We both are strong believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. In in twenty years in business, uh, even though. Uh, as as any typical business will go through, we Larry and I face some uh, challenges from time to time. I never ever question Larry's integrity or his uh, ability to protect my back. Uh, amazing friend, amazing uh, brother. People refer to Larry as the mayor of Winter Park. Uh, because Larry, there, there was nowhere you can go where Larry did not know somebody, whatever we were. It's amazing how people uh, knew Larry. Uh, Larry was also a very private guy. Uh, very few people uh, knew anything about Larry's personal life. Uh, and and, and most, most folks uh, would, would say that Larry was a great conversationalist, although when you watched him, uh, talking to somebody, uh, he spent all his time listening and asking questions about the other guy. And uh, obviously the other person felt uh, uh, really, really good about the fact that Larry was such a great talker because he let him talk about himself. Uh, Larry had an incredible wisdom in business. I uh, 
man, I value Larry's wisdom. I value his insight and some of the intangibles that we face from time to time. And uh, I'm really going to miss uh, uh, his, his wisdom in, going forward. Uh, Larry, I'm going to miss you greatly, buddy. I love you, man. God bless you. Today, I want to speak about a dear friend, Larry Walker. I met Larry in the early 1980s. I was a customer at the Sheridan North Hotel in Maitland, Florida for many years. During that time, Larry and I became very close friends and colleagues. I've got great memories of Larry. He was a man's man. He always stood tall above it all and always tried to help all the young people coming up the ranks. To me, he was a great leader in his field. He was based all over the world in hotels, great stories, a great journey and a great life, a great mentor to a lot of people. That void will be hard to fill. And I always said, Larry, you're a true friend. A true friend is like a diamond they never break. And with that, we'll miss you. And I'm so proud I got to know you. God bless you. This is Rick and Mary Johnson coming to you from New Smyrna Beach. Larry Walker was our friend. Larry was a true Renaissance man, defined in the dictionary as a man with many talents and areas of expertise and a wide range of knowledge. I couldn't find a picture of Larry with this definition in the dictionary, but one sure belongs there. What I most admired about Larry was his incredible number of friends. Even at the most remote restaurant with Larry and Jan, our dining would be interrupted, usually more than once, by friends of Larry who wanted to come over and say hi. It was like dining with a rock star. And I'm not talking just about casual friends. On the last New Smyrna Beach wine walk we all did together, we lost Larry half a dozen times because he stopped to have discussions with friends he met along the way. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, the man has lived well, who laughed often and loved much, who gained the respect of intelligent men and women and the love of children, who leaves the world a better place than he found it, who looked for the best in people and gave the best he had. I think Emerson was a friend of Larry's too. We are so blessed to have had Larry in our lives and are forever better for having known and loved him. To Larry. To Larry. To Larry. Hi, my name is Russ Salerno. I have been blessed to know Larry and Jan Walker for about 30 years. And I could tell you that Larry was one of the nicest, kindest, honest, faithful guys that I've ever met. And not only that, he was probably one of the funniest guys I ever met. He was not afraid to help people. He always was willing and able to do the extra to help someone that was not as fortunate as he was. Uh, I even talked to my son and about talking to Larry and both of them graduated from college, thankfully, and sent him over to talk to Larry. And Larry kind of told him how the cow eats the corn in the business world. And uh, he told them things that they needed to hear, not what they wanted to hear. And Larry does that a lot. I've seen Larry talk to young people, older people, people in trouble, people concerned about different things. And Larry was the guy that they went to. And, and he was just awesome when he did that. Well, I can remember one time we went to, my wife and I went to the Citrus Bowl. Jan and Larry hosted uh, about 50 people at a uh, Michigan State, I think it was Michigan State and Florida. And when uh, he was taking care of everybody and he was just trying to please everybody. So we had Michigan State fans and we had some, you know, a lot of Florida fans. And so when Michigan State would score, Larry would come up out of nowhere and he'd have a Michigan State hat on, a Michigan State shirt on, and he was rah-rah and whatever, whatever, and people are looking at him and whatever. And then uh, then when Florida would score, here comes Larry. He's jumping up and down. He's got a Florida hat on and he's got a Gator shirt on. And he was just uh, having a good time and making sure that everybody had a good time. And then if you knew Larry, Larry was a man of faith. Uh, he showed that very, very strongly to others. He talked about it all the time. Larry and I talked about faith all the time, and we talked about what would happen if one of us passed away. And uh, 
So we went through what we're going through now verbally. And uh, if Larry were here today, he would want to say, I want to talk to you. And if you wanted, he would want to know if you knew Jesus. And if you didn't know Jesus or had any doubts about knowing Jesus, be ready because Larry's coming for you and he wanted to talk to you. When I say coming for you, he just wanted to talk and, and uh, make sure you knew all about what Jesus was about. Uh, we're going to miss Larry and we're going to miss his jokes, but I know when I pass away, uh, I'm going to be up there with Larry and I am hope he's working on some new jokes and um, uh, he's going to be missed. He's already missed. Thanks for 30 years of you and Larry being in our life. Again, I have been very blessed. My wife has been very blessed and God bless you. Hi, my name is Lee Knopfsinger. And I'm Roger Knopfsinger. Uh, we've known Larry for a long, long, long time. Uh, I was first introduced to him um, from Jim Flanagan. Since then, uh, we worked out uh, together. We s went to spin classes together and spent as much time as we could together. Uh, he's been a really, really good friend for a long time. One of our favorite memories that we have is uh, one day back in the 90s, uh, Roger went up to Larry and he said that, we were going to Mackinac Island for Labor Day weekend. And we were really excited about it. So when we get to the hotel and we check in, we're upgraded to the presidential suite. And that weekend, there were many, many other surprises that we had. And come to find out after we got home, Larry knew the owner and manager of the hotel and had called him. So that's just one of our very fun memories of all the things that Larry did for us and for other people. He was a great friend, and we will miss him. I know Larry always loved a glass of really good red wine. So here's to Larry. We're going to miss you, and, and we, we love, love you. you. Bye. Bye. My name is Jessica Schlachter, a granddaughter of Big Daddy, which is what we used to call him. Big Daddy was such a strong athletic man. He would take us on scooters around many trails and the neighborhoods, and he would always keep us moving when we went to his house. I remember we would go to the swimming pool and even the tennis courts, and he would teach me how to play tennis. He got me into a tennis camp, and he would practice with me so I would get better at it. I remember when I was younger, he would buy me these workbooks for math and reading and all of those subjects that I needed to know. And he would work hard with me through them. And I remember getting stickers every single time that I would get something right. And the reason I'm so great at math is because he would purchase these books that were grades ahead of what I was in. And he would just work with me through them until I understood. I will never forget what that man did for me. And I am so proud to call him my big daddy. And I'm even more thankful that he was able to come to my wedding and we were able to have a dance together during that time. I am so blessed and I will never forget him. Thank you. I'm Emily Walker. Big daddy was my grandpa. One of my favorite things about him is he was always pushing ourselves to be better. Be better to be our better selves he would give us workbooks when we were little not very you know no one really likes it at the time but i feel like it might have helped us in the long run i can't really say you know little math ones or english sometimes stuff like that i don't know if i still have them probably not but whenever whenever he'd take snow white on a walk he would have us go with him just to stay active something to do be it walking, taking a scooter, taking a bike, you know, always following him in Snow White, just making sure, you know, we're staying active, being, being better. He would take us swimming. We loved swimming when we were little. We were always pretty good at it, I think. Um, it was just fun to just go to the Y and swim. He would take us bowling whenever we went to the beach house. I don't think I was ever very good at it, but he always encouraged us just to keep trying. <laughs> whenever we were at the beach, we would have these beach Olympics. We would do cartwheels or just sprinting, stuff like that. It was just fun. Stuff in the water was always fun because swimming. <laughs> he 
He always listened to us, asked about our lives, asked about our friends, our home, work, school. It was always just fun to talk to him because you know he's listening. He would keep on asking questions, stuff like that. I'll miss those things about him a lot. I love Big Daddy. I'm Riley and I'm a granddaughter of Big Daddy. Losing Big Daddy has been one of the hardest losses of my life because I did have such a good relationship with him and we were very close. So losing him now has been very difficult for me. But what I will always have and what I'll always hold on to are the memories that we shared together. So I remember when I was really young, I remember him teaching me how to swim. And also I was in cheer for a very, <laughs> for a few years and he was always such a big supporter of me being in cheerleading. Whenever we'd go to the beach house and we'd go down to the beach, he would always ask me to do tumbles and just do flips down the beach. And he was very supportive of everything for me. Also academically, he always pushed me to do my hardest. And I just want to thank him for everything he's done, all the blessings he's provided me in my life. Because without him, I would not be where I am academically and the person I am today. So I am very appreciative for all he has done for me. Also, last year I did attend UCF for a semester, which I am very grateful for. And being in Orlando, it was a really great opportunity to be near Nana and Big Daddy. So I was able to go visit them for dinner sometimes or go to get dessert, which he never turned down. It was just really nice to go and be so close to be able to go see them whenever I could. So I'm very grateful for those opportunities. Also, if Big Daddy was here today, and if I could say one more thing to him, the biggest thing I'd want to say is just thank you. <laughs> he's provided such a big role in my life, and he's done so much for me that I could never thank him enough for. So I really just want to say thank you for it all, and I miss you, and I love you, and I will remember you forever and all the memories we shared. This is Ken and Kathy Lee, and uh, this is about our dear friend Larry. Uh, we wanted to make a short little message about uh, how much Larry met to us and all the good times we had. Uh, I don't know Larry a very short time, uh, but in that short time I got to know him. He was a wonderful individual. I have memories way, way back uh, to a beautiful wedding reception for Larry and Jan. Larry, you were dashing as always. We had many good times at galas together. Um, at dinner parties um, and even to our party before the night before our wedding at your wonderful hotel just so many things I, I can't name them all but uh, in all of our situations and dealings uh, we're wonderful and you will be truly missed take care and Godspeed Larry this is Luigi Known you over 45 years, and we through business and pleasure, you've always been a perfect person in my life, and you've always been a giver and not a taker. There's been times when I talk to you every Friday about praying, and then go to your men's club for, for uh, Brotherhood Church service. I'll never forget your kindness to me. Over 45 years I've known you, and I'm thankful that you made that part of my life. Hi, my name is Angie Vincent, and Larry was my father-in-law. Well, Big Daddy, as we called him, because he was grandfather to my children. Uh, he was a very important part of our lives and very special to each and every one of us. Uh, my favorite memories um, weren't really a specific memory, just any time we would get together, just sitting down and talking with him. And he would ask you questions and genuinely care about what you had to say. Um, he cared about the kids so deeply. I mean, oh my goodness, he loved his grandchildren. Um, I will never forget the way he always made everybody feel. Um, he had a way of making everybody feel important. He was 
such an amazing guy who has accomplished so much and has such an amazing legacy. And I am so proud to say that I knew that man. I loved him and uh, will love him for the rest of my life. Um, what I will miss the most, I think, is every time he saw me, he always told me that I was a great mom and that I did a great job with my kids. Um, I don't take that very lightly and um, that has filled my heart so many times and I will keep that forever with me. Thank you. Hello, my name is Scott Vincent. I refer to Larry as Larry, and I can recall meeting him about nine years ago. I was a little bit nervous meeting Larry and Jan for the first time, being new to the family. But uh, they welcomed me with open arms, and you know they've treated all of us very well and been great family since when I first met them. And uh, he's always felt like a father-in-law to me. And it just, I've been, enjoyed learning all of the things that uh, he's accomplished in his life and it just amazes me all the things that he's done and been through and just so many things that I wish I could have learned from him but uh, it's it's going to be a great loss for us to not have him around and not be able to see him on Christmas we enjoy coming over for Christmas every year and spending the time at the beach house with them. And uh, it's, it's going to be tough this year. But uh, I know he's in a better place and we'll dearly miss him. Hi, my name is Keith Gerhards. I'm speaking on behalf of my entire family, my mother Yvonne, my wife Tanya, my brother Bruce, and my daughter Amanda. I wanted to say a few words about Larry. Um, we met Larry and Jan about 10 years ago in New Smyrna Beach. They immediately became part of our family. We frequently saw Larry as he sought to escape his wife who was trying to keep him busy doing projects around the house pretty consistently. But um, every time that we came in contact with Larry, uh, there was always a smile. You always felt special um, when you parted. Uh, you always had a smile on your face. Uh, he was one of the most authentic, uh, real, positive, loving people that I've probably ever known. And he will be greatly missed. So, R.I.P. Larry, and God bless you, Jan. Hi, I'm Jack Levine. I just want to say what a privilege it is to talk about my friend Larry and how much I loved him. I only met Larry about three years ago and we just bonded instantly. We uh, had some lunches together and I just saw his pure heart for God. He had such a great love and knowledge for God and wanted more of God and a closer walk with God. And of course that attracted me to him. Um, he was so smart and brilliant and shared so many of his life experiences with me. And I was just so grateful for that. He was so encouraging to me and so loving and just wanted to help me any way he could with my books, with my ministry, anything he, do, he could do to encourage me, he did. He introduced me to many of his friends who he thought I needed to meet that would be a benefit to me, and they were, and of course his Newgate family, and uh, he was just an amazing guy, a humble, sweet, smart, kind, generous, loving guy, and uh, he was just a very, very close friend. I truly felt that God knitted our hearts together like Jonathan and David. It was a very unique, special relationship. I didn't know Larry from days of old and, and how he made it and all that stuff. I just knew the Larry of the last couple of years. And that was my friend, the greatest, sweetest guy, loved his family, loved God, and I was just so happy to be able to share time with him and have those lunches with him and talks, and they were dear to my heart, and Larry is dear to my heart. So, Larry, we love you, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again, brother, up in the kingdom of heaven where I know you are. God bless you. My name is David Meltz. I've been friends with Larry and Jan ever since I was eight years old, and I just want to let you know what a big heart Larry had. Uh, I was talking to Larry one day and he told me about a gentleman that he may, met named Russ uh, at church and he was a homeless man and he didn't have any clothes, he didn't have you know, any money and uh, Larry asked Russ, you know, is there anything that you know, he could do for him? And uh, Russ, he wanted to go up north 
to visit his sister and to live with her. And he didn't have any money for a, a train ticket or he didn't have any clothes or luggage. And uh, Larry actually invited him over to his house and had lunch with, with Jan and uh, Russ for the day and uh, talked about the situation. Uh, Larry gave him some really good advice and some counseling on, on you know how to handle the situation and uh, some good pointers and tips, of course. Uh, so actually Larry picked him up, drove him to the train station, made sure Russ got on the train and he uh, kept in contact with Russ just to make sure everything was all right and he was good. Uh, not a lot of people actually would take that step you know to make sure someone this less unfortunate you know could have that opportunity but i thought that was very beautiful that he did that for the the, the, the man named russ also personally larry helped me out because i like to lift weights and i was doing it the wrong way so uh he actually um took me to a very nice uh gym by the name of uh jim flanagan uh and i went to his personal gym at his house in the springs and it was beautiful and jim actually gave me a book and he signed it for me and i took larry jim and another guy out to lunch afterwards but uh i, I guess uh it's just so nice how someone like larry can see a guy like me that needs a little bit of help lifting weights um you know getting fit um using my my personal spiritual goals and being healthy and uh he took the next step and uh we had a great time and I just want to say Larry I miss you a lot and you're a great person and I'm wearing your shirt right now uh, in honor of you. And I think about you every day and you always kept me motivated. Uh, you always told me that I could do anything I want to do and there's nothing I can't do and uh, I appreciate all your kindness that, that you've done for the world. Um, rest in peace and we all love you. My name is Jim Densmore. I met Larry 20 some years ago at Signature Realty and Development. Larry Walker, humble and kind, mentor, coach, well-respected, honest, terrific businessman, believer, faithful, friend, sincere, loving, caring, always shining the light on others, so humble, so kind a real sincere interest in people, unexpected phone calls, just at the right time. How are you? How's your family? How's your business? Anything I can help you with, Jim? A few years ago, there was a top hit song by Tim McGraw, Humble and Kind. This song personifies Larry Walker. Don't take for granted the love that this life gives you. When you get to where you're going, don't forget to turn around. Help the next one in line. Always stay humble and kind. This song is Larry Walker. Larry, I love you. I thank the good Lord for you and for sharing your wisdom, friendship, in love with me. Thank you. Hi, I'm Byron Carter, a longtime friend and colleague of Larry Walker. My heartfelt thoughts and blessings go to Larry's family. I've worked with Larry for many, many years. My relationship with him was, was not the typical employee um, boss relationship. It was much better. We were friends first and foremost. There was no ego whatsoever with Larry and his Credentials uh, would not have it would not have been hard to do with his credentials. He was always humble and treated me as an equal in all respects. Larry was a man's man. He was a Christian and always ethical in all of his affairs. Larry worked harder on our relationship than did I. He called me regularly just to check in to make sure I was doing okay. If I wasn't having a good day, he would make it better and would always put a smile on my face. I will truly miss Larry and his counsel and insight. God bless, Larry. Hi, I'm Russ Butler. And Denise Butler. And uh, we just want to uh, say how much that uh, we 
just loved Larry. Uh, it was so uh, great to have him in Sabbath school class. He listened and um, he was so uh, gracious with his comments. Uh, Jan and them walking in was always one of my great pleasures to see them. Uh, great time to be together. Uh, such a kind gentleman. Uh, he had a brilliant mind. Loved his wife, his family. Uh, it was just uh, for me a great pleasure to have known him. Uh, and with the hope of getting to see this gentleman again, um, mm. I'm uh, sad for this and sorry, and and I um, wish the best and uh, love you, Larry. See you soon, man. Hey, uh, offering my condolences to you, Jan and Larry Jr., and all the rest of the family. Um, you know, uh, we've known Larry for about a decade, if not a little bit more, maybe even 15 years um, as members of the hospital church, but we became also social friends with Larry and even some business. Um, I sought his business advice about a couple things and he was always very uh, supportive and he had great ideas and super patient and kind. But I think my favorite thing about Larry is what an amazing um, guest he is when you host a dinner party. Mm -hmm. And, you know, many a Sabbath afternoon, he and Jan came um, for Sabbath lunch or they came for um, some dinners at our home and we always had the best time. But my favorite part would be the next day, Larry would always always call and leave a message on um, my cell phone and just go on and on about the food and the time together. And, and believe it or not, Jan, I saved those messages, so you might want to hear them sometime and I can play them for you. But um, he's just, it shows just what a special man he is and what a heart he had for the details. Um, and uh, even in towards the end of his life, how he always had time for a smile, which is just... You know, dying well is a pretty hard thing to do, and I think we can say that Larry, um, Larry died well as an inspiration to all of us. So, we'll we love you, Larry. We'll, we'll miss you, and uh, we just can't wait to all be together to someday around the big, big um, dinner table in heaven. Love you. Love you, Jane. Um, yes, this is Rex Beach, and um, and Larry Walker was my next door neighbor, over on Hill Street in uh, in New Smyrna Beach for the past five years. And my biggest regret about his passing is that I unfortunately never never really came to know him or got to know him until late in life or late in his life. Um, because he literally, and, I, and I'm not just saying this because I'm making this video for him now and, and, and what's, what's transpired this past week, I just, he was literally one of the nicest people I've ever met. You don't, you don't meet people like him every day. He just always was upbeat, um, always seemed to be in a good mood and had a kind word. And like I said, he's just there. Uh, Larry Walkers are in short supply in this world today, unfortunately. But uh, he was a, he was a great neighbor. Um, I'm probably de I'm definitely not as close to him as probably a lot of people uh, doing this for him at this time right now, uh, and that's unfortunate because I certainly would have liked to have gotten to know him better and spent more time with him. Um, and it's a, um, a big loss for his family and for his, and all of his, his close friends and everybody. And he's a very accomplished guy who did so many things in his life. I mean, I knew that. You could tell that. And there's so many people that loved him. And um, you know, I just wanted to say he'll he'll be uh, he'll be sorely missed uh, over there on Hill Street in New Smyrna Beach. Uh, R.I.P. Uh, Larry Walker. I'm Brad Pierce, and it is such an honor to be able to speak regarding. Larry Walker today. Larry was such a positive influence in my life, and not only my life, but I truly believe in everybody's lives who he touched in, in so, so many ways. I would walk into a Valencia meeting. He was always the first face that I would see because it was always, he was lit up. He was always, always smiling. And then you'd talk to him and you'd engage him. And it was like, you were the only person in the world that, that mattered in that moment that he would, would lift you up. He, he would make you into the best version of yourself that you could be. I always, always felt that Larry was just, he was so incredibly positive. He was so giving, so philanthropic. He just, he cared about so many others and anybody that was in the room just could, could feel that instantly in a heartbeat with him. My life is certainly so, so much better because of my relationship with Larry. He, he was, was a huge, huge influence in, in getting me involved with Valencia in teaching me about philanthropy, teaching me about business. 
teaching me about just being a good friend and, and, and just being somebody who, who I really, who I admired, I respected, and I truly, truly will miss. I absolutely positively can say without a doubt that Larry Walker made an incredibly positive impact on the world. And it is just, has been such an honor to know him. He's gonna be missed. Larry, I know that you're up there. You're, you're looking down upon all of us and, and continuing to guide us and, and know that the lessons that you taught us along the way will remain in our hearts for many, many years to come. And we will follow your lead and we will follow your guidance and continue to do good things in the world as part of your legacy. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate you changing my life and so many others. Hi, my name is Tufik Saman. Larry Walker was a friend and fellow board member at the Valencia Foundation. I want to, you know, honor him and we will make this video. And I, I got to tell you a few years ago when I met him at the first um, Valencia Foundation event I attended, he came over with a big smile. He didn't know who I was and he just um, opened his hands, gave me a hug and say, um, welcome to the board. It's a great, great cause and let me know if I can help you in any way with your business or with your foundation efforts. And I could tell from the first time I met him that, that this man is here to serve his community and he always puts others' needs ahead of his. So it's a big loss for us um, and our hearts are broken. But we will honor his legacy at the foundation and continue the good work. When I think about Larry, I think about a person who is very real. Um, a Christian gentleman, but but beyond just being a Christian gentleman, a true person who is what you see is what you got. And he was a very real person. And I really have always valued that in a person, and I really am valued it in Larry, in our friendship, and also in his introduction to me of other people. It was always just a great, a great person who was being authentic, and uh, just want to celebrate him in all the best ways possible. Um, Andy alluded sometime in one of the sermons about a, a pie, a blueberry pie that I'd made. And so Larry picked up on that and grabbed onto that really fast and told me he wanted some of my pie. So um, I was so honored to, to make him a pie, a blueberry pie. And, you know, of course, he did just like a true southern gentleman he didn't want to just keep it to himself he wanted to share it with us all of us and eat it together um it was just a special time um i i love larry larry just um you know made my day every time i was around him and jan we hope you continue just to find lots of encouragement and all the great memories as, you, as they come through your mind or as other people share memories with you of how what a wonderful 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 gentleman larry was Yes. Um, you know, God said the greatest gift is love, and Larry knew how to do that. Larry was, was gracious enough to ask me if I wanted to intern over at Newgate Capital Partners, and I'll always be so grateful because I was, you know, just a college student trying to figure out what I wanted to do in life, and that summer alone provided me so much value, and um, it was really an experience I'll, I'll never forget. Uh, even in the first couple days, Larry gave me this book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And, you know, besides the book, I, I, I had been out of reading for so long. I had never been introduced to the growth mindset. Um, and, and just reading that book and it got me hooked back on it. Uh, I, had, I started reading so much after. I still do to this day, and I, I really attribute that to, to Larry and that one summer. Um, it really gave me the confidence to really start growing more, to, to um, really start my own business, which is you know what I do today. And um, really, if, if I never met Larry and, and got into that, I, I don't know, you know what I would be doing today. And that's really the impact he's had on my life is, you know, I got to see how he and his team worked with entrepreneurs and, um, you know, being in meetings with, with everyone at, at, the, at the group at, at Newgate. 
I got to see that you know entrepreneurship is really what I want to be doing in life. And you know, Larry will always be a role model for me. Hello, Larry. This is Betsy Lamo. And Kenny Cohen. Larry Walker. You know that you could change a life with just a sentence or two. You would recognize that special something in someone, and you would let us know. First with a compliment, then with a challenge. Very, very clever. You are uplifting and positive, and always with that slight chuckle. Larry Walker, you were the most interesting man in the world. And definitely the coolest cat I know. We'll miss you, Larry.